Kia Rio Review. Our rating. 3 Star. The Kia Rio is a good value, practical super mini with a great 7 year warranty, but it is far from perfect. 4. Decent practicality, punchy turbo petrol engine, 7 year warranty. Against. Unexciting design inside and out, firm ride, mixed cabin quality. The Kia Rio has come on leaps and bounds since the no-frills first generation car was launched. Unfortunately, this new model isn't a huge step on from the Rio that preceded it. An uninspiring design inside and out, merely average ride and refinement and some hard, cheap feeling interior plastics all hurt its cause in a competitive super mini class. Still, the Korean Super Mini still has a number of selling points. Its reasonable value, features a tech-filled touchscreen on top models and offers a decent amount of space for passengers. The 1.0-liter turbo petrol engine is our range highlight, offering strong performance and efficiency. It also comes with the brand's ever-admirable seven-year warranty. It's just a shame that Kia played it safe with the new Rio styling, meaning it fails to stand out in this hard-fought sector. Our choice. Kia Rio 3 1.0 TGD i99 BHP. The Kia Rio is a super mini rival to cars like the Vauxhall Corsa, Ford Fiesta, Skoda Fabia, and Volkswagen Polo. It's the sister car of the Hyundai i20, sharing a similar platform underneath the bodywork. It's only available in five-door form, with a range of petrol and diesel engines and prices from just under 12,000 pounds. Kia first used the Rio name back in the year 2000, debuting it on a small hatchback famed for being one of the cheapest new models on sale thanks to tempting £1 deposit offers. It was a huge amount of car for not a lot of cash, but at the same time it was derided for its poor driving experience and interior quality. Things moved quickly, however, and as Kia went from strength to strength in the US and Europe. Through generations 2 and, particularly, 3, the Rio morphed from cheap and cheerless to a genuine competitor for the super many big hitters. The latest fourth generation model is only an evolutionary step over the previous MK3 car, however, with a minor increase in size and subtle design changes. The 2017 Rio features four simple trim levels, 1,2,3 and the limited run first edition. Base models come fitted with kits such as aircon, electric heated door mirrors, Bluetooth, auto lights and LED daytime running lights. Step up to 2 spec for features like 15 inch alloys, cruise control, a color touch screen with DAB and uprated speakers, rear parking sensors and a reversing camera while 3 spec adds faux leather, auto wipers, and an upgraded 7 inch screen with SAT NAV, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Finally, flagship first edition brings 17 inch alloys, keyless entry, and LED rear lights. The engine range kicks off with familiar 1.25 and 1.4 liter non-turbocharged petrol engines. However, Kia also offers a new TGDI turbo petrol engine with three cylinders and power outputs of 99 or 118 bhp. As well as offering greater performance, it beats both non-turbo engines for efficiency. Those who really want to sip fuel, however, can opt for the 1.4 Kriti diesel in 76 bhp or 89 bhp form. Engines, Performance, and Drive 3.3 Star Rio's turbo petrol engine is punchy and refined, but disappointing ride and refinement and merely average handling disappoint. The Kia Rio shares much with the Hyundai i20 under the skin, including the chassis and some of the powertrains. Kia claims its car has been tuned differently, however, with focus on improving both comfort and drivability. Unfortunately, the result is a bit of a mixed bag. On the one hand, the Rio handles tidily enough, with good body control in the bends, accurate, but feel-free, steering and a decent agility. It lacks the sense of involvement or fun found in the Ford Fiesta, yet it's acceptable for the class. The moderately engaging handling comes at the expense of ride comfort and refinement, though. It's by no means uncomfortable, 
but the Rio feels quite firm over all but the smoothest surfaces and can get a bit crashy over big bumps. Refinement isn't all that impressive either, wind noise is kept at bay, but road noise is noticeable on the UK's poor surfaces. Both these issues only get worse with the larger wheels of top-spec cars. In this respect, it's no better than the previous generation Kia Rio. That's a shame, because around town the Rio is likable enough, thanks to good all-round visibility, a slick gearshift and light clutch, plus those smooth and nippy engines. Engines We've yet to try the four-cylinder, naturally aspirated 1.25 and 1.4-liter petrol engines in the new Rio, but experience with them in the old model tells us they're likely to be refined but short on torque, needing revs to get the best out of them. Those looking at the 1.4 would likely be better served by the new 1.0-liter turbo. It's also the only Rio available with an automatic gearbox, a dated 4-speed unit. The 3-cylinder 1.0-liter unit produces just one more brake horsepower than the 1.4, but significantly more torque at 171 Nm. It means it's much more flexible at low revs, and more refined thanks to the reduced need to rev it out. It's not the best three-cylinder turbo on the market by any stretch, but it injects some much-needed urgency into the Rio's driving experience. The unit is also available with 118 bhp and useful extra top-end performance, but only on the pricey top-spec first edition model. Diesel super minis aren't hugely popular, but Kia continues to offer them anyway. The super frugal 1.1 liter diesel has been ditched, which is a pity, but the 1.4 Credi is offered in two power outputs, 7.6 bhp and 8.9 bhp. We've yet to try the former, but the latter offers strong performance thanks to a healthy 250 Nm of torque available from just 1,500 rpm. It isn't as willing to rev as the best small diesels, however, and the petrol options are still quieter and smoother. MPG, CO2 and running costs. 3.9 star. The Rio offers mostly good fuel economy despite some old tech powertrains, and the seven-year warranty should benefit residual values. Low running costs are often at the forefront of buyers' minds when choosing a new Super Mini, and the Rio excels in that area. It might not be the cheapest to buy anymore, but it won't cost the earth to fuel or maintain. The entry-level 1.25-liter petrol engine manages a claimed 58.8 mpg combined and emits 109g slash km of CO2. The 9.8 bhp non-turbo 1.4-liter fares slightly worse, managing 56.5 mpg and emitting 114g slash km of CO2. While those figures aren't bad, and you're more likely to be able to get near the mpg in the real world than you are with the turbo engines, they're a bit off the pace considering the limited performance on offer. The dated 4-speed automatic option on the 1.4 really worsens things, too, only managing 46.3 mpg and emitting a whopping 140g slash km of CO2. The 1.0 liter turbo fares much better. In its cheapest form it undercuts both the petrols above on emissions, producing 102g slash km of CO2, while managing a claimed combined economy figure of 62.8 mpg. Even the 118 bhp version is a better bet, too, emitting 107 g slash km and managing 60.1 mpg. While those figures are pretty strong, they can't quite match the impressive 65.7 mpg of the VW Polo 1.0 TSI. If it's fuel economy you're after though, it's diesel to the rescue again. The 1.4 liter Credi unit manages a claimed 80.7 mpg in its lowest powered form, though that only rises to 74.3 mpg in the higher powered version. CO2 emissions are 92 g slash km and 98 g slash km respectively. Insurance groups. No insurance group data for the Rio has been announced yet though we expect the figures to be roughly in line with the Super Mini class best. For reference, the previous model started at a lowly Group 2, rising to just Group 7 on the top models. Depreciation No depreciation data has been revealed for the new Kia Rio as yet. The 7-year, 
100,000 mile warranty is transferable between owners, which is a real selling point on the second-hand market. Despite that, the previous Rio only managed to retain around 38% of its value after three years. Interior, Design, and Technology 3 Star Dull looks and drab interior hurt the Rio's appeal. Kia has made no bones about its desire to push the Rio upmarket, tasking its German and Californian design studios with the challenge of injecting its Super Mini with some premium appeal. With its solid proportions and smooth curves, the newcomer is clearly a more grown-up proposition than before, but it's also far blander than its handsome predecessor. Under the skin, the Rio follows the same template as its mainstream rivals. There's an all-new platform with a longer wheelbase and greater strength, but the chassis features the same strut front suspension and torsion beam rear axle as the VW Polo. Climb aboard and it's clear the brand's designers have tried to give the cabin a mature look like the exterior. The dashboard features a heavily sculpted design that flows into the doors, while the silver-trimmed climate controls look like they are heavily influenced by those used in Audi's smaller models. Unfortunately looks are deceptive, and closer inspection of the plastics reveals a hard and brittle finish that's a long way behind the Polo. Still, there's lots of kit on the Rio 3, with sat NAV, a heated steering wheel and seats, climate control, and a reversing camera. Also included is faux leather trim, but it looks and feels rather low rent. Sat NAV and infotainment. The entry-level Rio models get a standard radio and CD unit with Bluetooth connectivity, while two versions add a 5-inch touchscreen. Step up to the 3 and you get the flagship infotainment that boasts SAT NAV, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Also included is a 7-inch touchscreen interface that's easy to navigate and responsive, but hobbled by blocky and dated-looking graphics. Hooking up your smartphone is fairly straightforward, and once linked you can make call and stream music. There's also a voice control function, you'll pay £195 extra for this kit on the VW. However, there are no online in-car apps, unless you connect to the unit via Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to make use of the services already installed on your phone. Other handy features include a reversing camera with on-screen guidelines, Plus there's a pair of 1-2V power connections and a USB port for handy charging. Practicality, comfort, and boot space. 3.6 star. A big boot is a plus for the Rio, but rear legroom isn't the best. The Kia Rio is bigger than before, so there's more space inside, although the Rio's best point is its roomy boot rather than a particularly large cabin. Storage inside is taken care of by some handily sized door bins, a large glove box and a deep center console cubby that has room for a smartphone, as well as a pair of cup holders. Size The Rio is 5mm wider than before, at 1.72m, and has a 10mm longer wheelbase, 2.58m, for more space inside. The car is 15mm longer, at 4.07 millimeters, than the previous model in total, but it's actually 5 millimeters lower, 1.45 M, as well. Designers will tell you that contributes to a lower stance, but unfortunately the dull looks don't do much for the Kia's image. Legroom and passenger space. While the Kia boasts impressive luggage space, the interior isn't quite as roomy as the competition. In fact, our tape measure revealed that there's around 10 mm less legroom in the rear than the VW Polo, and a massive 100 mm less than in the Suzuki Balano. That said, there's enough space to carry four adults in reasonable comfort, while the wide opening doors make access straightforward. There's plenty of space up front, with the driver also getting a reasonable range of seat and wheel adjustment. Boot an increase in length by 15 mm and a 10 mm stretch in wheelbase over the old car have helped make the Rio one of the more practical models in the class. For example, the boot now has a healthy 325 liter capacity. The load bay is well shaped, too, with a reasonably wide opening and small lip. Reliability and safety. 
3.8 star. The long warranty is one of the Kia's best aspects, with seven years of coverage as standard. Kia has worked hard to shake off its budget brand image, and on the evidence of its recent driver power performances, it's clear these efforts are paying off. For example, the brand finished a creditable 14th in the 2016 survey, five places ahead of more upmarket VW. Better still was its dealer performance, which bagged ninth overall in the same poll. The Rio also boasts impressive safety credentials, with autonomous emergency braking, lane departure warning and six airbags featuring on all models. The car is too new to have been tested by Euro NCAP, however. Warranty The Kia Rio comes with a 7-year slash 100,000 mile warranty, just like all other models from the brand. That means it's best in class in this area, handily beating the 3-year period you get as standard on most European and Japanese super minis. It was a huge selling point for the previous car, and continues to be for this model, especially as there's not much else that the Rio stands out for. Servicing The servicing packs available for the car in the UK are called Care 3 and Care 3 Plus, which cover routine work over 3 or 5 years respectively. They cost £299 and £599 respectively, and are transferable if you sell the car.